<laughs> we don't talk over the theme song except to say that we are listening to the theme song. Welcome! Welcome, friends, both far and near. Both warm and dear. Both thick and sheer. That's right. I'm friends with some fabrics. You can call anything your friend, and no one can give you a hard time about it. You know why? Because you got to respect friendships. <sighs> Look, I've talked before about my love for unlikely animal friendships, but I'm going to spotlight likely animal friendships today. How about like a duck and another duck? Now, you might think, well, of course, they're friends. They're both ducks. Did you know ducks despise one another? Ducks hate ducks. It's a miracle there's more than two of them. And they're... You want to know the the duck total right now? Worldwide? It's in the hundreds. They're all over... I mean, it's got to be. I don't have the stats right in front of me. I don't understand why I don't I don't understand why ducks love bread so much when it's a thing that they never how were they ever going to come up with that you know what I mean what uh, what Why did they start eating it when people threw it at them? Yeah, all right. Never seen this before. I'll swallow it. What's with you, ducks? Answer me! I've been told that we have a lot of ducks listening to the show. Um, a lot of downloads from ponds. That's what we were looking at. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Spontaneous with Paul Tom Can I have a second part? This is a show where I invite a special guest onto the program to have a free form conversation with me. Inspired by one one of our guests today is worried about a secret guest we have in the studio who cannot talk because of her species. Species? Species. Reese's? Anyway, I have a freeform chat with a special guest inspired by a blind question from our previous episode's guest. Then I invite some improviser pals onto the program to join me in a narrative improv that is one continuous story as opposed to unconnected scenes, oftentimes utilizing details gleaned from the conversation with the aforementioned special guest. And it is all scored on piano by Mr. Eben Schletter. That's what he goes like. Ladies and gentlemen. I'm always happy to see this guy. This is his... <laughs> he gives a little self-effacing shrug. I believe his third appearance on the show. And he's doing me a solid today because we had a guest drop out. I texted this guy. I said, can you be there? He said, absolutely. The prophecy came true. Because here he is. Welcome back to Spontaneous Nation. You know him as Donnie. Orphan Black. You knew him as Constable Johnstable on Art School Detective. <laughs> art School Detective. Is that what it is? The Artful Detective. The Artful Detective. <laughs> also known as Murdoch Mysteries. It just depends on what channel you watch it on. Right. Oddly enough. It's like a Hellman's Best Foods kind of thing. Yes. Yeah. And it was Constable Jackson. It was not Constable Johnstable? <laughs> I wish it was because that's a way better name. <laughs> he could never get a promotion. No, you'd have to stay constable the yeah. whole time. Yeah, he would refuse promotions, just like Commander William Riker, the first officer of the Starship Enterprise. Exactly. <laughs> More on that later. <laughs> Please welcome back to the show our friend Christian Brew. Oh, hey, hello, hi, Christian. How are you? I'm well, thank you so much. Thank you, thank you for being here on short notice. Thank you for having me. Um, I got your text this morning. I was 
very excited. Uh, I will admit I was on the toilet at the time. And I Why will for that. you admit that? Because you didn't need to. <laughs> That's a good point. I don't know. I no one was pressing you for that information. <laughs> I am too honest. That's my problem, and I need to do something about that. It's like the movie Liar Liar, right? It, where it exactly. went from he couldn't lie to yes. he just couldn't stop talking. Exactly. I uh, I made a deal. What happened in the movie? He made a deal with someone. Was it no? Like a, it was his his kid made a wish. His kid made a wish. <laughs> Witch. I don't. <laughs> it's it. It his doesn't business, matter. His businessman met a witch. Yeah, yeah. It, <laughs> he had a big happens. witch account at his firm. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. I believe his child made a birthday wish. Right. I don't have a child, truth. but I did meet a witch, so that's probably why I was thinking yeah. witch. Which, any witch that I would know. Uh, do you know Belinda from the Valley? <laughs> Belinda the Valley Witch. Yeah, the Valley Witch. I've heard of her. Okay, she's lovely. I hear if you get a picture taken with her, it costs twenty five dollars. Yeah, and she doesn't even show up in the picture because witch. I know that's a vampire thing, but witches too. <laughs> they can make it happen. Witches too. Yeah. A lot of people, they, they don't like to mention that. <laughs> yeah. It's a bit of a scam. Question. Yep. I have a question for you oh, from our previous episode's guest. Oh. I think it's going to be a fun question for you. Oh, boy. You seem like the kind of guy mm -hmm. that would have fun with this question. Mm. The question is. What movie universe would you most want to live in? Now, as we speak, you're wearing a T-shirt. Mm -hmm. That is the name of mm -hmm. a movie universe. Yes. It takes place in a galaxy far, far away. It's called Star Wars. This is true. Um, but I have a lot of movie franchises that I love. My first thing, the first thing that came to mind was not Star Wars. It you're was, not looking at your own shirt? Nope. I know it's, I know it's on my chest. That's right. Uh, Jurassic Park came to mind first, but then I was like, that's <laughs> dinosaurs and that's dangerous and most likely I would die because I wouldn't be able to outrun a dinosaur. But here's the thing. Be because this this kind of thing comes up. I know that uh, uh, our friend little Janet Varney on her podcast, The JV Club, mm -hmm. sometimes this question comes up. Mm -hmm. You could live in a movie, you know, what movie would it be? A lot of movies have dangerous things happening in them. That's true. You know, like you're not you're not necessarily living in the movie. You're living in the world of the movie. So who knows what happens once the credits are rolling? Those people still live in their universe. Right. Yeah. That's true. So do you want to stand by Jurassic Park? No, I don't. Better I don't because that's like, <laughs> do, do I go like 1992 Jurassic Park classic and then I'm stuck in the 90s again and I don't want to do that because- <laughs> That was that was not. Now fun. this gets into a different thing. Is it just always the '90s <laughs> in the world of Jurassic yeah. Park? Does it stay 1992 or '93 <laughs> the whole time? The sequels don't count, <laughs> even though they move forward in time. Exactly. Or do, does it? Is it Jurassic World? At which point I'm just living two years ago, right? Which is all right. You kind of. Oh wait, do you start in that year and then continue forward? We've got questions be, beyond this question. But here's the thing: we are free to answer those questions. Great. However, we will. <laughs> it is great. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so mean, you make the rules. You make the rules. Sure. What would you like it to be? I think it's just kind of you're just within that world, frozen in that time period. That's what I'm going to say. Okay. Um, now that said, I'm thinking through all the franchises that I love and the options aren't good. <laughs> I love Indiana Jones, but that means I'm stuck in world war two mm -hmm. and there's Nazis everywhere. And that's less appealing. Unless it's, unless there's like fun archeology span going on. Ooh. Oh, <laughs> communist. <laughs> Right. Oh, which also, one? Also, there's Nazis everywhere now, apparently. So. That's true. <laughs> so I'll take Jurassic World. Uh, no. Um, Star Wars is a dangerous universe. Mm -hmm. I mean, you've got, it's basically World War II, it just in the future, or in a galaxy far, far away. But then there's places where there's nothing happening. The Dagobah system comes oh, to mind. Oh, God, the Dagobah It's system. just a swamp system? You know, no what? one wants to be there. No, well, and why would Yoda just- There's one guy who wants to be yeah, there. Yeah, Yoda. Let me go live out the last of my days, <laughs> pretending I'm not Yoda, tricking Luke. But you know what? In the Star Wars universe, death doesn't seem to be a big deal. If you're a Jedi. If you're a Jedi. Yeah, which most people are not, and I doubt I would be a Jedi. Wait, what? do I get to choose if I'm a Jedi? Sh well, did those people? No, you're born with like mitochondrial DNA that says you are. I mean, I'm not a nerd or anything, but... <laughs> <laughs> 
Oh, boy. <laughs> yeah, okay. We need to answer another question then. We need to answer another question. Okay. If I'm living in this world, like say it's the X-Men universe. Sure. Am I a mutant? Do I have a power? Do I get to choose my power? Because they don't. They're just born with it. How Maybe about this? How about this? this? Yeah. <laughs> How about this? You are you, okay. but you're in one of these universes. Oh. So you have all the powers of Christian Broom. I have no power. All the this proportionate is, uh, strength and abilities okay. of Christian Broom. This is way less fun all of a sudden. No, I'm joking. Okay. <laughs> uh, then I'm going to take the world of... <clears throat> Kramer versus Kramer. <laughs> <laughs> the fifth element. Oh, wow. Whoa. Yeah. Left field. Yeah. Out of nowhere. Yeah. The fifth element makes an appearance. <laughs> yeah. Now, let me say this about that movie. I saw it when it first came out mm -hmm. in the theater. Oh. And I thought, this movie is dumb. <laughs> but since that time, so much time has passed, I now know a number of people who consider that a not dumb movie. <laughs> I, I am one of them. <laughs> and yet I also think it's really dumb. It's so cheesy in like a kind of mid nineties, Jean Paul Gaultier designed supermodel esque citizenry of this weird mm -hmm. world, like Euro cheese film that is trying to be very American. And yet also does that American action film thing while still having that Euro cheese element. And it's such a delicious combination because that so rarely happens. So many times you see European films trying to be like an American action film and it's not like quite <laughs> as good because it doesn't really line up, but it's, they're trying so hard. And it's like, it's, it just doesn't quite do it. And you're like, come on, please stop. Just do your own thing. Be yourself, Europe. Be now, yourself. This, this movie is directed by Lou Besson. Lou Besson. Who also directed Le Professional? Le Professionnel. La Femme Nikita. Where? Uh, most recently, Valerian, which was supposed to be like the, like the next fifth element that he's been working on for 30 years. It was not. Was the fifth element a hit at the time? I think it's become a cult classic. Is that too much to say? A cult classic? No, I don't think so. I don't think so. But I, I, I can't remember if it was successful at the time. I think it was successful enough. And I will argue that it is uh, Bruce Willis's best film. That is a huge statement to Are put out there. Are you really saying that? Yeah, I'm saying that. He is, he is so charming and funny in not just a fully surly way. Like you actually see a few layers to the onion of Bruce Willis. <laughs> Whereas in every other film, he's just like Bruce Willis doing his surly like action hero thing. Mm -hmm. This has a lot more playfulness to him. It's, it's, really, it's an enjoyable watch. It's more on the 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 the, the end of the death. Uh, the death becomes our end of the spectrum. Exactly. Great film. <laughs> <laughs> Which I, I don't think I've ever seen that film. Oh, he puts his hand through a hole in <laughs> Goldie Hawn's stomach, or maybe it's Susan Sarandon. Is it Susan Sarandon? No, it's it's Goldie Hawn and Meryl Streep. Right? Mm, I remember the right. I remember the trailer. And they gave away a lot of the special effects fun in the trailer. I think they gave it all away. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. What about Hudson Hawk? I, that movie I saw in the theater. And? It's not good. Nope. <laughs> it's rightfully thought of as a bad film. Yes. But you know what? Here's the thing. It's all subjective, right? I guess you're it's right. It's all subjective. You can't say definitively this is bad. Because I've, I've had this theory for a long time. The worst movie you can think of is somebody's favorite movie. That they unironically love that movie. Yes. They're like, this hits on, <laughs> it hits every target, firing on all cylinders, home run. Yeah. I, and I, the last time I had this proven to me was for some reason the, the movie Used Cars came up. What is Used Cars? Used Cars what is, is used this, cars? what is it? Come to the Used Cars. <laughs> Um, it is a sort of comedy, I think early eighties, Kurt Russell's in it, I think. Mm. And it's about used car salesmen. Oh, okay. Perhaps? That makes sense. Given the title. Yeah. And, um, a friend of mine said, I don't know why this came up. This is years ago. And my friend said, that's my dad's favorite movie. And I was like, I see, there we go. Favorite. Whose favorite movie is used cars. See? Yeah, that's fair. Do you think less of that your friend's dad? Not at all. Oh. I think he's a fine man. Oh, that's I, We've never met. <laughs> okay. Well, then it's hard to draw. A but you know thing. what? I like his kids. 
They're well, my then friends. They're wonderful people. There you go. He can't be all bad. Except but for I, you, Scar. I, I, I think I'm past the point where I think less of somebody for liking a thing that I don't like. Right. The only The only time it gets weird to me is when people want to argue with you that a thing is good if you say you don't like it. Yes, I yeah, I would agree to that. What if it's politics? Well, that affects people, so that's different. <laughs> <laughs> Fair point. That's a good point. Like, I didn't like the new Twin Peaks, but I don't think it was ruining anyone's life. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> but people sure acted like it was. Right. Well, <laughs> that's what I thought when I watched the original Twin Peaks. When I started to, I was like, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to watch this. Everybody talks about it. And it was like... Soup. I don't want to use this word. It was trumped up to me. Sure. Got it. He ruined that word. Anyways, sorry. So I hyped. wanted you to say hyped. Hyped. Overhyped. They overhyped it, and and I was like, oh my god, I can't wait to watch this. It's been like it's been on my bucket list for years, and I started watching it, and I was like, I don't what get it. This is huh? Like <laughs> <laughs> it was yeah. like they were playing a practical joke on me. Have they released another Twin Peaks that is a joke Twin Peaks that I'm – am I being punked? <laughs> is there another one I should be watching? They shot them side yeah. by side, Lord of the Rings style. <laughs> they shot them at the same time, like, here's the real show, and then we'll put out a joke yeah, version. <laughs> totally. For people to not get. If you want to see the real version, you have to go to the Library of Congress. See, I thought so, and they yeah. won't let me because I'm not an American citizen. That's right. Not yet. Not yet. Will you, will you turn your back on Canada and become an American citizen? To quote Michael Caine in Batman, never. <laughs> That's, I just remember <laughs> Michael Caine as Alfred being the most Michael Caine he could be, and his accent somehow got more Michael Caine as the movies went along. What was he responding to? To like Bruce Wayne <laughs> say, he was like, I'll never leave you, or something, or like, will you ever turn your back on me, Alfred, or something like that. And he was like, Never. <laughs> like it just kind of crapped out of his mouth. <laughs> Never. Well, that's, I'm sure that. So to quote him in that one word Absolutely. Sentence. The famous Michael Caine quote. Yes. <laughs> Never. Never. I'm sure that people in uh, Canada are rejoicing to hear this. It was on people's minds recently. So that's good. <laughs> yeah. Were people asking you? Are you going to quit people Canada? People have asked. Yeah, are you going to quit Canada? Uh, I, am, I am a citizen of two nations. And I don't plan on quitting either one of them. Those nations are Canada and Finland, or Suomi, if you will. What's this Suomi business? That's what they call it over there. Really? In their language. How did we get it so wrong? <laughs> That's not even close. Yeah, well, I mean, leave it to the English to just come into a place and be like, no, no, um, this is the land of Finns. Let's just call it Finland. We're not... Finns, Moon of Finland. Suomi. Suomi, yeah. So you. My I, father was born there. I can't believe with this. I don't think this came up before. I guess not. How do we not cover this? I, I wish we had more time. Oh, uh, Christian, I, I, I know. Uh, folks, I hate to end it with a cliffhanger, <laughs> but we got to move on. I understand. I understand. To quote the famous comptroller. Mm -hmm. of the city of Funky Town. Mm -hmm. We got to move on. <laughs> Christian Brune, where can people find you should they wish to find you and should you wish to be found? On the Instagram as Bonnie Castle, mm. B-O-N-N-Y-C-A-S-T-L-E, or on Twitter as at the Brune. You because in? I separated it. Why make That's it right. easy for people? <laughs> I guess they can just Google my name and they'll find it. And you go Instagram first. I don't know why. <laughs> I, I don't... I don't know why. It's... Such a weird, everything's weird. Everything social media is weird, but I use it. And your name, if people are not sure how to spell it, right. it goes a little something like this. <clears throat> Please. K-R-I-S-T-I-A-N-B-R-U-U-N. It fits. Yeah, it fits. Amazing. <laughs> and if it fits, you must have quit. Oh, that's true. <laughs> and I did. Ladies and gentlemen, we are going to take a break. When we come back from the break, we will meet our improvisers. So... Stay alive, no matter what occurs. I will find you. Ooh, last month he did. Who? Hey, you listening to Panama? I'm always listening to Panama by Van Halen. <laughs> Van Halen. Halen. It's like Haim. Hi, Scott Ackerman. Hi, uh, what was your name? It's Paul. Come on. Sorry, I meet so many people. <laughs> Scott, do you have, and I don't, I'm not, 
I hope this is an a communicable disease. No, I know you do. I, I hope <laughs> this is not insulting to ask. Okay. Because you're successful. Please, you can I'm ask me anything. I'm an, I'm an open book. Do you have HBO? <sighs> I mean, occasionally I'll stay in a hotel. And I'll to see a color television. <laughs> yep, <laughs> <laughs> it's American conditioning. Yep. Oh, it's the best. Oh, and if I see that sign out there, free HBO. Oh yeah, screech! Pull it over, Martha. We're staying here tonight. My mother's name is Martha. <laughs> <laughs> my name. Oh my God. Let's not be friends anymore. Listen, Let's not, I mean enemies. Of you, course, have frenemies. <laughs> Listen, Scott. I want to talk to you. Ears. I want to talk to you about this new HBO series. Mm. Well, it's not a new series. It's in its second or third or fourth season. I don't know. What is it? Uh -oh. it's season two. Season two. Here's here's a thesis statement for you. Okay. Breaking into comedy. Breaking into comedy. It's messy. It's hard. Mm. It's intense. That sounds like uh, my last uh, boner. <sighs> Now, I know we're talking about an HBO show. Please don't do HBO <laughs> style, humor. style humor. Okay, sorry. I because apologize. kids are listening to this at church. <laughs> I'm talking about the HBO comedy series Is Crashing. this a sermon? Is this a sermon we're what? doing? What? Oh, Lauren oh Lapkus. Oh, my God. Lauren Lapkus from Crashing is here. Hi. Well, Lauren, you know about this better than anybody. But Crashing is on HBO. It stars comic Pete Holmes. It's executive yeah. produced by Judd Apatow. Yeah. And it shows a realistic and honest depiction of starting out a comedy career in New York City. This is, is all Is true. all that true? Really? Yeah. Lauren says, be. Lauren says I she was there. I swear to God. Now, see, Lauren, you can corroborate this. In season one, Pete was broke, getting divorced, and trying to navigate the world of stand-up comedy. True or false? True. I play his wife who he divorces. Please and just answer the question I asked. Oh, true. Yes. <laughs> Sorry. And your hand is on a Bible, so. Uh, true. Uh... <laughs> now, in season two, he's still all of those things. Is that true to the best of your recollection? Yeah. All right. Now, here's where it gets interesting, Your Honor, because this year— <laughs> I'll allow it. Pete explores— Should I watch myself? <laughs> Please do, Counselor. Pete explores the alternative comedy scene well, where you don't have to get laughs, I guess. Yeah, I guess <laughs> you could just, like, read, uh, you read know, your, your notes. diary. Yeah, you, uh, <laughs> you don't have to have jokes. He dabbles in romance, and he expands his worldview. He dabbles in romance? Yeah. It sounds don't like my last Don't tell me boner. about that. <laughs> <laughs> I play his ex-wife. You play the ex-wife? You don't want to hear about his romance dabbles? No, but she has a little dabbling herself. Really? Oh, Wait. shit. Are you, Spoiler. Weren't you with uh, some dude in the first season? Well, you have to see who I'm with now. Uh-oh. Boy, 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 boy. Is it yeah. one of these people? Guest appearances include comic stars Whitney Cummings, That's Bill Burr, David Tell, Jeff Ross, and Jamie Lee. It's Whitney Cummings. Okay, there we go. <laughs> Season two, uh, this, I am required to call you to action. Season two of Crashing Don't premieres mess this up. January. Don't mess this up, Paul. Scott, the you, details are very important. You cannot talk over the call. they are required. You cannot talk over the required call to action. I beg your pardon. <sighs> Watch yourself. Don't mess this up. Season two of Crashing premieres January 14th at 1030 Post Meridian. All of season one is available to stream on Home Box Office. And then this the final piece of action that I'm calling you to do, get into it. <laughs> oh. Ah! Welcome, <laughs> welcome back to Spontaneous Nation. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, it is time to meet our friends from the land of Make Pretend. Seated right across from me. <laughs> <laughs> ah, got him. <laughs> Welcome back, our friend Matt Gorley. Hi, hi, Matt. Hi, 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 hi. hi. I, I got to tell you a used car quick story about used okay. cars. Okay, I got I've time got for one. one UCQS. <laughs> when I was just a young man, my dad would take me skiing, and I didn't wear sunglasses, and I got really badly facially sunburned. Oh, God. And then, then some relative, whom I do not remember who it was, hit me smack in the face with a snowball, and I had <laughs> snow blindness for forty-eight hours. And you had facial sunburn and snow, bind snow blindness. blindness. I couldn't open my eyes. It hurt too bad. So oh then we, the rest of the stay in our cabin, someone put on used cars, and I, for years, had only heard used cars. <laughs> and when I finally saw it, it was nothing <laughs> like I imagined. <laughs> <laughs> so it was way different than I thought it would look. <laughs> time for me to revisit it. I don't, oh, I don't. I don't know what to do with this information. <laughs> well, take it, and then we'll tackle it next time I come back on. So. <laughs> <laughs> I guess I threw those details out too rapid fire. For it was a lot. Process. It was a lot to take in. 
I feel here's what's weird. I feel like you told me the story a I long have, time yeah. ago. I mean, it's my only used car story, so. <laughs> <laughs> Or I should say it's my best one. It's my best one. <laughs> oh, my God. So you, how many times did you hear the movie? Just once. Just once. But okay. I heard, like, I sat, like, for reviewing. We were all quiet watching it in a, in a room, and I only heard it. <laughs> I mean, did you enjoy the movie? I, well, when everybody around me was enjoying it, so I guess I did. Yeah, like, no one gave a damn about me. They were having a great time watching this film. <laughs> And here's the other weird part is I remember not sitting on a couch. I remember like being almost like on a dog bed or something like like what? lying on the floor because I was in pain. And I just remember kind of just curled up and but just like, hearing it in the room on the floor. <laughs> and then know. how long was it after that that you got to see them? Years later, years <laughs> later. So it was nothing like I had thought. But did you, were you alone when you, when you watched it? Uh, that I don't recall. Oh. Yeah, I don't know. Can you still remember the version that you had in your head of what yeah, everyone it, it looked wasn't, like? Yeah, it wasn't as 70s as the movie is. <laughs> it was, but, and it wasn't as like dry and dusty. Like, I don't think I knew they were kind of in the desert or wherever they were. <laughs> I remember there being a lot of dirt, like people getting covered with dirt or something in that movie, but I should watch it again. You should watch it again. Yeah. All right. Well, I'm, I'm taking off. All right. I'll see you in approximately 90 minutes. <laughs> Matt, I'm going to look away from you now. Yeah, but it's fair. I'm going to look right next to me. Hello. Hello. It is Tawny Newsom. She here. is back. I'm here. I've never seen used cars. I've never even heard of it. Do you think you ever will? I will now. This sounds amazing. <laughs> I'm just going to listen to it. <laughs> right? I think, look, I encourage all of our listeners to take the used cards challenge. <laughs> the Matt Gorley face blindness challenge. Uh, what is it? Snow blindness? Snow blindness. Mm. Face blindness. He also has face blindness. <laughs> right. <laughs> oh, Tawny. He reintroduced himself to everyone here. Yep. <laughs> um, yeah. What, what I would like listeners to do is <laughs> rent used cars. <laughs> Stream it, whatever you got to do. Red box. Red box. <laughs> <laughs> I imagine if it's anywhere, it's red box. Russian pirate it. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> and don't look at the TV. Don't look at the, uh, the computer, however you watch it. Turn your screen dark. Just listen to it. Wait several years. <laughs> and then watch it again. Now, Tawny. Yes. The fifth element. I love it. You love it. Okay, so when it came out, I don't know how old I was, but I maybe was too young to know whether and what a good film is. Yes. Because at the time, it was probably like, I mean, like All Dogs Go to Heaven was probably my favorite movie for most of my childhood. So I don't trust my, like, you know, my memory yes. on that. It has become a cult classic. I support, I'd like to yes my friend Christian Thank here. Thank you. Um, I will say, though, that Luc Besson's best film is The Big Blue, which then became my, like, high school, college favorite film for forever. Have you ever seen it? Was it a surfing movie? No, no, not surfing, free diving. So it's Jean Reno, it's uh, Rosanna Arquette doing some of the best work she's ever done. I I love this film. It's about this free diver who believes he's actually a dolphin and just wants to live under the sea. And everyone's like, bro, you going to drown. Please come back up. <laughs> so the whole movie is all these French people trying to like pull him out of the water. And he's like, no, I'm good. No, 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 no. <laughs> yeah. And Luc Besson or uh, uh, Jean, Jean Reno plays an Italian named Enzo. So imagine Jean Reno's crazy gruff voice then doing like a crazy Italian accent. It's a weird, freaky film. And I love yeah, it. I am a dolphin. Um... <laughs> Why did the guy ever come back up? I'm um, spoiler, he doesn't. Oh, eventually. Uh, eventually. Why does it take him the length of a movie? Because of the love of Rosanna Arquette. Oh! Because she meets him at a research station in Antarctica. That's right. And then there's this <laughs> wonderful. What is there, free diving in Antarctica? That is the worst place to free dive. For, for research, I guess. They got to know what's under there. Right. Um, and then there's this amazing scene that I remember, like, as a teenager being like, oh, this is like adult love. There's this terribly Good. 80s, like, uh, just such a, like, girly, dumb scene where she goes back to New York to her, like, loft apartment. Apartment, and her friend, who I want to say is like Janine Garofalo, or like, uh, no, not Janine Garofalo. Damn it. Fran Drescher. No, uh, uh, Jean Triplehorn. <laughs> I always do this. My apologies to both. Jean Triplehorn, but it's not her. It's like someone who of her ilk, like a character-y type actor. Wait, so it's not Jean Triplehorn either? <laughs> nope. <laughs> nope. Neither lady. Just a brunette. <laughs> it's just a brunette woman. Amy Peets. 
<laughs> but she's like sitting on the, in their like loft apartment in Brooklyn, like eating a tub of ice cream, and she's like, "So tell me about him." <laughs> and Roseanne Arquette's like, "I looked into his eyes," and it's so silly. But I remember just being like, "This is what happens when you meet a guy." I think I heard you talk about this on the JV Club. Well, Did lot, I? Of, lot of talk about the JV Club today. Yeah. It's a good podcast. <laughs> Mm-hmm. Johnny, I'm going to turn away from you now. Okay. And look directly across from you, kitty corner for me, meow. <laughs> this gentleman making his first appearance on the show. Hello. Thrilled to have him. Chris Grace is here. Hello, Paul. Chris, hello. I'm a little thrown because it's my first time here. And right. I was listening to Matt's story. Yes. And I was like, let me think of something similar to that. And I thought he meant just a story about used cars <laughs> like, <laughs> in my life. Right. Like, what's a funny thing that happened to me when I bought a used car? And then at the end, there was a twist that he was actually just talking about the movie. <laughs> used cars. And I get that movie confused with a movie called Tin Men. Oh, sure. Oh, yeah. Which is also, I think, dudes selling things. They're aluminum siding <laughs> salesmen. Oh, yes. no, wait. I just mixed that up with, with tin, tin cup. cup. Yeah. Oh, that was uh, what I did. Not, uh, I'm mixing it up with pushing tin, but on purpose. Oh. Mm. You're, you're ha- uh, remixing it. Yeah, right? <laughs> I, think it's, I think it's time. <laughs> now, Chris, um, you, I first met you when uh, you were in a play with my wife. Mm-hmm. Uh, you guys went to the Edinburgh Fringe. It was a play. Oh, what, oh, why am I blanking on the name? Mary Go Mary, Nowhere. Mary Go Nowhere. I almost had it. I mean, to be fair, you never saw it. That's not true. <laughs> Chris, I, I can't have that on the podcast. <laughs> I absolutely saw it. Um, and, uh, and then I saw you. I got to see you in Baby Baby Wants Candy yes. at the UCB. Hilarious show that uh, we've talked about on here before. Our, our guests, um, uh, Zach Reno and Jess McKenna of Off Book, um, have been part of that show. Um, and I'm thrilled to have you uh on this show right now. So people know, what's what's your improv background? Where did you study? Uh, I did a lot of it in New York, but I've been mm-hmm. out in L.A. about three years now. All so, right. And luckily I had friends out here that were already in a show at UCB called Magic To Do, and they asked me to be in it. So What's this show? It's the, sort of the same thing as Baby Wants Candy, but on a Thursday instead of a Friday. <laughs> <laughs> Is that on their poster? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so it's a, it's a musical improv yeah, show. Yeah, that's right. And it's called Magic To Do? Is it yes. Pippin based? That is a reference. It's 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 only <laughs> Pippin. Pippin based. <laughs> we, actually, we actually just do scripted chunks from Pippin. We get a suggestion at the top, but we sort of disregard it. <laughs> and then we just do Pippin. You're like, where's a place a river could, uh, what could a river do? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Just like if, sour. If, if the sky had a ge- geometry to it, which part of the sky <laughs> would I want to be in? <laughs> Oh, guys, these are rock solid Pippin references. Um, do you have a used car story? No, I don't. That's what was throwing me because I was like, oh my God, it's, I'm not going to be able to keep up with these guys. What was uh, that, that idea that Tony brought up of like when you're too young to know if something is bad? Like when you're a kid, just all entertainment is, this is great that I'm seeing this. Do you remember the moment when the first time you saw a movie when you were a kid and you were like, I think I didn't like that movie? Um, I will actually say I'm probably the opposite in that I was a kid that was like had strong opinions too early. So, really? for example, when I was a child, my favorite TV show was Thirty Something, <laughs> <laughs> and I related to it. I, I How was, old are we talking here? I don't. Re- I mean, this is is that the '80s? So maybe yeah. I'm like ten or something. Oh my god. And I would like related to Timothy Busfield's character. (laughs) Um, So yeah, maybe I was too much, too quote mature, too early. I don't know. And so when were you were you not into the stuff that your friends were into? Not really. Like I've never. I've. I've. You know, I like Star Wars and Star Trek, and I liked superheroes for a while, but then. You know, stopped. I, I still read comic books, but I like just stopped reading superhero comic books. Right. So. Um, but then when I turned 30, I remember th- seeing episodes <laughs> of that show and just being like, I don't like this show. <laughs> <laughs> there was a, I saw a clip of 30 something. It was on that, uh, you know, when CNN was doing those decade shows, it was about the 80s, and they showed, because 30 something was a huge show at mm-hmm. the time. Um, and they showed a clip from it. Which featured, uh, oh, what's the name of the guy? The dark hair guy, Ken Olin? Ken Olin, yeah. 
Ken Olin. Ri- original John Hamm. <laughs> That's, <right>. <laughs> <laughs> That's absolutely right. <laughs> absolutely. So he is, he's, he's being sassy to some woman on the show. Um, she says something to him. And then he says, regarding her very au courant fashion of the time, she has shoulder pads in her blouse. <laughs> and the show is set in, in the Philadelphia area. And he says to her, in response to whatever question she asked him, and he says it just like this. Nice shoulder pads. You being drafted by the Eagles next season? <laughs> <laughs> I rewound it a million times because I, I couldn't believe, like, this was okay? This passed muster? Yeah. Back then, there were three channels. <laughs> this was like, this is good enough to put on TV. But in Philadelphia, yeah. Also, so Christian? Many- and this is not a slight. That was a slight. You re- it was a slight. I love Philadelphia. That's right, you do. <laughs> but you also love shoulder pads. I do. It reminds me of my mom in the 80s. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. And your military experience. <laughs> yeah, outside of Philadelphia. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Chris, have you thought any more about this used car business? Uh, no, but I've never owned a new car. So I guess I've dealt with used cars my whole life. <laughs> Do you think you always will? Um, you know, it's supposedly smart to never buy a new car. Right. It's good to buy a car, you know, a year later because it's cheaper. But I kind of do want to have a new car someday just to be like, look at me. <laughs> <laughs> Does that only last a year? Yeah, I guess. Okay. Like, I only leave it. the sticker on it. <laughs> Never, <laughs> Never take well, it people off. leave tags on baseball caps. That's true. Yeah, I That's can leave very my true. sticker on my car. Mattresses. Yeah. Mini Pearl. <laughs> I would leave this sticker over the paint job for that first year before peeling it off. Yeah. Yeah. Straight from the factory. You've never seen that? I don't know that I have. Oh. I've seen the, 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 the one in the window, the sticker in the window. The, the, the one that gives you the shock. No, like when you see like those trucks with way too many cars on them, like the, the double-decker car oh, transport the truck. Yeah, the scary, yeah, the protective yeah. wrap. Light blue wrap. They always have like a light blue yeah. wrap on the, <laughs> on the paint. Yeah. I would, I would buy that truck and just sit in one oh, of those cars. Right? <laughs> yes. You have a chauffeur drives the truck. and But I'm in the car. You Actually, sit in. That's a good yeah, Uber I service. Still, I would still steer. Yeah, of, and, co- yeah. of course. Not the one. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's the next Uber service is just a flatbed truck, and you can right. sit in your car, cars but with, they will drive you wherever. Cars with views. Yeah, cars with views. Yeah. <laughs> one of the way great. too many cars. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, we're going to take a break. During the break, you will listen to the ad. When we come back from the break, we're going to reveal the location for our improv, and then we're going to do that improv. All this and nothing else when Spontaneous Nation returns. Welcome back to Spontaneous Nation. Ladies and gentlemen, we have our location provided to us from Earwolf's own Dana Wickens. That's right. I texted her out in the hallway. <laughs> she's, out in the, she's out in the lobby there. She's working. And I texted her, Dana, come in and give us a location. And she said, ah, did you get one or should I plop in? And I said, can't you read? <laughs> and she came in. We have fun here. All right, so we have a location. We're ready to begin our improv. But first, just so as you know, in order to aid us in our storytelling, we use three sound effects that move us about in time. Let's say we need to go into the past for any reason. Someone's having a memory. We're learning how something came to be. Anytime we go into the past, we do so by using this flashback sound effect. Now let's say we want to return from the flashback back to where we were, or anytime we want to go into the future, we use this flash forward sound effect. Now, this final sound effect moves us only in space, not in time. Let's say we're in a scene, we want to find out what's happening at the exact same moment somewhere else. We use this meanwhile sound effect. Past, present, future. Everyone gets it. <laughs> and now it is time to reveal the location for our improv provided to us by your world's own Dana Wickens, who is literate. <laughs> and that location is a 
corn maze. Mm. A corn maze. We take you now to a corn maze. <sighs> well, mm. I feel like we've been here before. It's getting real hot. It's real hot. Yeah. <sighs> Did you bring water? No, I thought we'd just have some on the way out, you know? I, I honestly thought this was going to be a snap. How big is this thing? I, 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 I don't know, Rich. I don't know how big it is. It looked smaller in the brochure. He listed it in kilometers, so I don't, I don't know kilometers. I just know miles. Is 100 kilometers a lot? Is that I mean, like six it, miles that or something? Sounds like a lot. It was it, like six miles. I didn't it. think this thing went on for miles. Oh. <laughs> wow. No, but I mean, it's not like one continuous I, mile. I, it's like just all jumbled up together like yeah, guts. I, I, I. You mean like the, like, the gastrointestinal? Yeah, gan, intestinal. Yeah, exactly. Intas, intestinal. <laughs> the gastrointestinal tract. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Attention, corn maze shoppers. The corn maze will be closing in 10 minutes. Please make your way to the exits or you will be locked in. Hey, where are the exits? He can't hear you. That's a problem. Al, it was worth a, 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 a try. I mean, Why come on. call us shoppers, do you think? Is there stuff to buy in here? Well, we haven't got to that part, I guess. Maybe there is. Hey, you remember that labyrinth? Oh, God, that labyrinth. <laughs> What is with the Starbucks in there? <laughs> yeah, there was a Starbucks in that yeah. labyrinth. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, all right. Um, let's uh, go around here. Oh. Samples. Oh, uh, oh, oh. Want samples. some samples? Well, look at this guy. Hello. Hi there. Hi. Oh, no one's been over here the whole day. What What do you have on that tray there? Oh, I just got little uh, trays of water. Well, I, 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 I would love to sample that. Samples? Mm. Yep. All right. And they're free, right? The, these are free. These bigger bottles over here are for sale. Oof, look at that big bottle of water. Oh, it looks real good. It's all sweaty. Now It's nice and cold. These samples, they're, how many can you take? Well, just one per trip. Don't be, don't be luxurious. <laughs> all right. Uh, <clears throat> when you say one per trip, what do you mean exactly? It means you can take one, then you got to go out of sight. Count perfect. to ten. Oh, perfect. Come back mm -hmm. and get another one. Oh, so we can... We can have a little cup of water. Yeah, well, here, here you go. Try oh, this. <laughs> oh, oh, that That's, was delicious. It's salt water. Let's. <laughs> I, I thought, still thought it was delicious. I love salt. Well, that's what, that's what sampling is for. Do you like it? If no! You like it, then, I don't like If you don't like it, don't buy it. I can't force My you. My mouth is immediately dry. Look. Hey, I heard there were samples. I don't feel like we're in the right part of the maze. I know. This is what I came here for. Me too. They have the best samples in this corn maze. We haven't found one sample. We could have gone to Bristol Farms and had a hell of a day. Yeah, we could have gone to a pumpkin patch and just like relived our youth. This is really, we got to find some samples or I'm not going to feel like I have worth as a human being, Mabel. Me either, Martin. <sighs> Man, I'm hungry and I don't want to buy food. So I came to this corn maze because that seemed like the quickest way to get free food. Do you right. have time to sign this petition for Greenpeace? Oh, well, oh, oh gosh. Uh, maybe on the way out. All of the mm. all of the worst things about Bristol Farms, none of the good things. <laughs> it will only take a second. I mean, do you even believe in what you're uh, proffering? Well, sh sure. Like uh, everyone deserves their own peace. Wait, what? Yeah, what do you think right. it is? Yeah. What do you think Greenpeace is? It's like everyone gets a yard. What? No. Is that not it? No, it's like whales and shit. Whales get yards? Yeah. I don't, honestly, I don't know what you do. That's why I'm not giving you money. You're supposed to go out on boats and shoot fire hoses at whaling boats. I'm Wait. not gonna do that. Exactly. Now, do you want to join us in our hunt for some samples? Oh, I can show you the samples. What? <gasps> oh. Yeah, yeah oh, no problem. All right. I know where all the samples are and I'd never get lost. All right, so, um... Do you have anything other than the salt water, or is that? Oh, sure. Here's another little tray. Oh. Just take it, and I'll tell you what flavor it is. Can't we find out before we taste it? Well, I don't want to predispose you to a positive and negative reaction. I mean, that makes but sense. I, I appreciate your professionalism, okay. but um, you you go. You go. Oh, all right. It's kind of thick and bra mm -hmm. brackish. That's right. <laughs> all right. <laughs> it's olive oil. Oh, my God. Hey, do you like that? 
It's oh, it's. I mean, it's very smooth. There's actually no water in that at all. Not a, that is it's what we call an water. oil. That is an oil. Well, it's a hundred percent oil, zero percent water. That is not what we need. All right, right now. now what this one looks kind of reddish. I'm gonna say it could be wine. Why don't you try this one? It definitely looks like wine. It definitely does. Take a sip, it's blood. All right, <laughs> I'm gonna hope. I'm sorry, I had something got in my nose. Did you? Did you say something? I, I sneezed something. Oh, okay. All right. Anyway, take Here a we sip. Go. Down the hatch, it's <gasps> blood. <laughs> Now, why would you be selling blood? Why is that a sample? Because these are what this is what I'm proffering. Whose blood is got, this? Well, mine, of course. Oh my what? God. <laughs> you twisted. <sighs> Forget it. You're gonna have to go on without me. I haven't had a sample since yesterday. I mean, that, okay. What? Yeah, I mean that's fine. So you're just gonna go off with this Greenpeace guy? Maybe? Yeah, I mean he looks like he knows where he's going. I I think I figured it out. But I I could be dead as far as you know the next time you see me. I mean, you'll probably just be, like, real dehydrated. You okay with that? I mean, I'm not, like, not okay with it. I'm, 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 I'm sample focused right now, and you are kind of dead weight. I'm sorry, Martin, but honestly, you've been living on my couch for, like, two months longer than you said you would. That's true. So I'm ready to cut the cord, and I was going to take you to dinner and, like, talk about it, but honestly, this feels like a natural end to our story. I'm not going to make you do that. I'm going to make this easy on you. I'm going to walk into the corn. You're doing the right thing, Marvin. Hey, I appreciate that, man. I know we just met, but thanks for the sound advice. You're welcome. What? Uh, Bye. Did you sneeze? Wait, oh, Martin, you're crashing through the corn. You're crashing through the raw... That's not even the... Oh. Look out, Marvin. (laughs) See you later. Samples, get your samples here. Samples, wait. get your samples See, here. See, I told you, I told you there were samples. Wait, but we can't, wait, we can't find you. Where are you? Try going through the corn. Samples, samples over here. Oh, oh. you're not allowed to just go through the corn. You gotta follow the maze. But we're starving. Well, try and follow the maze to the samples over here. Okay. <laughs> I'm just going to push through the corn and get to this old-timey newsie selling samples. Samples! Get to samples! I'm going to stay here. You're on your own. I'm sorry. Come on, Martin. Follow me. Well, that's all I have. I just want to warn you about one more thing. Yeah? As you walk through the maze, don't be attracted by the sample siren. What, what's a sample what, siren? Yeah. It's a man that will call to you saying he has samples. He has none. He's okay. a deceitful person. Right. All right. Well, we tried your samples. Which and they were, were terrible. Very, they were terrible. Well, agree so, to disagree. This, Mileage this, varies. Sure. But this guy has no samples? But he will compel you to him with the sound of his voice. Okay. Is he anywhere near the exit? I don't I don't. That's why I got these earplugs in, so I don't hear him. I have no idea. So, where so he, it, it would work on you too? Oh yes, oh, yes. <laughs> he was my mentor. Well, do you sell what? any sort of earplugs that can we can protect ourselves with or something? Uh, well, here, let me crumple up these little trays and uh, stick them in your ears. Oh. There's still blood in them. There's blood all well, over these things. One has blood. One has olive oil. Sheesh. I think I'll just put them in my just pocket for now. Just be careful. Yeah. Is all I'm saying. This maze is full of dangers. Mabel. Martin? Green peas? Samples? What? Martin. Where are you? I can hear you, but I can't see you. Marvin? Samples? Marvin? Martin. Who's Marvin? Martin? Martin, yes, me. Marvin! Who's, samples? What? Oh, God. Marvin. I'm freaking out. I'm having, I'm having delusions. Markvin! Markvin? Markvin! 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 Help. Mark. help me. Somebody's got to help me. I'm so alone. Oh, hello there. Well, hello, pinstripe gentleman. Would you like a sample? I sure would. That's what I came for. You look like you could use something delicious. That would have been my choice. What do you got? Corn. Corn? I could pick that off one of these husks right now. Well, here's a sample. Well, here's one for you. These here are the finest corns you've ever had. Well, thank you for giving me. You know what? In all my years, no one has given me a sample. Well, I think it's only fair. But this is raw. Can I just eat this or what? I say pop it in your mouth. You should probably shuck it first. Oh. There you go. There you go. You, you haven't seen a, a woman around and a guy with a clipboard? Not yet, but I would like to. 
Okay. <laughs> Can you help me find them? I would. I was hoping you could help me find them, <laughs> sir. What's your name? Well, my name is Thaddeus Mickleback. <laughs> Thaddeus Mickleback the third. Okay. I don't suppose you know the way out of here. I know everything about this here corn maze. Really? It's true. Where to get the best samples for starters, but I mean also the exits, the entrances, and the shortcuts. Get your shortcuts right over. One final question about this mm. sample siren. Does he at least know the way out of the corn maze? I understand he won't give us samples. He knows everything about the maze. He invented it. He wow. invented it? He built it himself. All he 100 took, kilometers of it. Yes. He took all the royalties from his band, Mickleback, <laughs> and built this maze out of it. Hmm. Fascinating. Just to be clear, the band is called Mickleback. No, I heard you. Yeah, Mickleback. Mm -hmm. Everyone knows Mickleback. Oh, yes. yeah. Yeah. I didn't want you to confuse it with some other band like the Dave Matthews Band. Oh, right. No. No, terrible. Dave Dave Matthews? <laughs> Dave, Dave, Dave Matthews. Matthews. <laughs> or Nacklenor. <laughs> <That's right. laughs> Attention, corn maze shoppers. Oh, okay. The corn maze is now closed. All the lights will be turned off, and you are left to your own devices. What? See you tomorrow. Why would that be a policy? And oh. why would they build a corn maze in a giant factory that's covered? Well, let and me close up shop here. Turn what? off the lights in here. It all just goes in a briefcase, and out I go through this hatch. What? what? <laughs> I didn't know there was hatches. Where'd the hatch go? It's like he done disappeared. Rich, Rich what happened to you? <laughs> well, I, <laughs> you got you, you're not talking like yourself. Look, I, I'm not feeling like myself. I'm feeling all sweaty and dehydrated. Because <laughs> that olive oil you drank? I think it was the olive oil mixed with the salt water. Yeah, I drank blood. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, he. In fairness, he did say blood before he drank it. Yeah, I thought that's what he said, but I then you sneezed. <laughs> yeah. Mm. It was my sneeze's fault. I apologize. You look different. Don't worry about it. It's getting dark. Do you even know where we're going? Um, what answer would you like to hear? Yes, I'd like to hear yes, I know where we're going. I wish I could say yes. Okay, what do you do when the corn maze closes down? Do you just live here? I'm going through something right now where getting out of a long-term relationship. Why am I getting <laughs> so much backstory? What are you? <laughs> well, I've been sleeping at work for a couple weeks now. Like in this corn maze? This is where I work. And so, yes. So you don't know how to get out of here? I d did previously. And? But it took me a long time. Let's kind of it put a strain on my relationship. Knowing how to get out of here? Well, it, it taking me so long to get out of here. Gonna... Like, here's the thing. I don't know how to get to the exit, but once I see the exit, I know that's the exit. <laughs> yeah, me too. I know what an exit looks like. Oh, well, same. <sighs> oh, gosh. We're the blind leading the blind. Oh, I thought I would find you here. What? Oh, how did you know? Oh, hello. Are you his new partner? I am not, but you clearly came from somewhere. Can you tell me where to go yeah, to get I out? Yeah, I came from the entrance. Can right I? Right here. Can I go out of this this entrance? Uh, we have some unfinished business. All right. Wait. I brought you back all of your CDs that you left at the place. Thank you. You said you would have them out by Thursday. There's by so much Mickleback in there. <laughs> it's only Mickleback. He he followed I, them around on tour. I love Mickleback. It's kind of the reason I got a job here at the at the corn maze. I love that song. Look at this pictograph. Please, I have heard that so many times. On repeat. <laughs> Listen, I, I I, know that things are not great between us right now, but I don't think it's cool that you show up at my work. Well, it, I don't think it's cool for you to be at work after work ends. Well, I happen to not be able to know how to get out of here. Yeah, well, I mean, that was the problem the whole time, wasn't it? Coming home at 3 a.m., even you, you got off at work at 4 p.m. Yeah, well, it took me a long time to get out of the maze. Yeah, this might as well just stay and go back to work the next day. This well, does sound like doing now, so. a very serious problem, but it sounds like you know how to get out of here. Yeah, so I know how to get out of here. Can you take me, please? I left a golden thread to the entrance. <laughs> I'm going to follow out. As long as no one has messed with it, it should be fine. Uh-oh, a golden thread? Oh. 
Look at this golden thread. Would you like to sample it? No, it's of no interest to me. You, did you say a golden thread? Mm-hmm. Oh, boy, oh, boy. Well, what's that supposed to mean? I, again, being negative about all of my ideas. You said that about decoupage. What did I, all I said was, boy, oh, boy. And th- there was an attitude in there. Uh, th- okay. Always there's an attitude. Did you guys attitude. hear that? What is that? I don't know. I'm not from here. Well, I'm not from here. I just work here. You live here. I go uh, by default. Samples. Oh, 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 no. Samples. It sounds like giant steps. Yeah. I, Samples. I think I know what that is. Samples. What is it? <laughs> There's a sample siren, and uh, he absorbs people. What? And then he becomes bigger. Wait, what? What? Like Katamari Damacy? Uh, what? Okay. I'm I, sorry I'm not into all the stuff that you're well, into. Well, you never li- really took interest in my interest, did you? No, I didn't. I told you. I like 30-something, and that's it. Yeah. You know I had a weekly Katamari Damacy video game playing group, and you never even showed up once. <sighs> because it, that was your thing, and I wanted my own. Th- I think it's okay that we had separate things. Should we be scared of this monster thing? We should, for sure. Okay. Samples. Samples. Sample. Wait, Hartman? Okay. I'm in the body of this this sampler. It's like the Wicker Man. Shut up. Shut up. Stop talking. Do you know this monster? Uh, do I? No, I know no one. I don't know you. I don't know Greenpeace. Oh, people, people. What? My friend, my friend, my friend Rich got absorbed by this, uh, this weird guy. Oh my God, there's all this blood dripping down your mouth. It's, it's dried. It's not a big deal. Ugh. So your friend Rich got absorbed? That must have been the sample monster. Yeah, his, his face changed and he looked different and then, then he was gone. Samples! Samples! Look, I look up there. <gasps> Uh-oh, that's oh. him, all right. Hear ye, hear ye. <laughs> oh, my God, is it a town cry? Oh, no, he's making a proclamation. This is not good. <laughs> I see ya, and I want to be ya. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, he's going to absorb us, so we are him. Oh, hello there. You, you look like you could use some samples. Well, I, I'm uh, I'm an employee, sir. So oh, Captain Greenpeace, how are you? Yeah, I'm, I'm good. Thank you. Good Thank to you see you much. here we'll once again. See you, Sample Siren. You've avoided me for many a day. Well, you know, professional courtesy and all that. <laughs> Join the club. Oh, come on, really? Mm-hmm. <laughs> look, Sable Monster, did you eat my friend Martvin? Yes. Okay, well, that clears that up. Did you it eat, was delicious. Did you eat his friend Rich? Did you eat my friend Rich? Oh, of course. Okay. Less delicious, very oily. He just eaten, he just swallowed a uh, shot you of met, olive oil. You met Bad Sample Man. Wait, Is that his name? That makes sense. Bad Sample Man, yeah. yeah. You're, I mean, they can talk. You can hear him. Boys? Uh, uh, hi. Martin. Hi, I don't know where I am. Everything's dark, and it's just kind of wet and moist in here. I found a bunch of samples in here, but they're all disgusting. Rich! Oh. Uh, Al, what are you doing? You ran away from me. Yeah, you, you started... Morphing into somebody else, and it got I got scared. It ran away. That's me. Yeah, I figured that out now. Oh, good. Wait a minute. What's that sticking out of your side? It's a thread. That's my golden thread you absorbed. I absorb everything except the corn. But that was my way out of this place. Oh well. Looks like y'all gonna have to join me. Sample siren. Look. We're just regular people. We yeah. we thought this corn maze would be a fun diversion, and now we're trapped in here. We don't want to be absorbed. Can't you just let us go? Well, that's literally the point of me building this here corn maze, so that I can get normal people and eat them. But we just wanted to feel autumnal. Now we're done with that, and we want to move on. Please, just have mercy on us. I've started a fire in his belly. I'm oh, hoping... Oh, I'm Pinocchio ho- stratagem. Yeah, I'm hoping that'll get us out. Hey, this guy just lit me on fire. I'm on fire. Oh, shit, wait. Oh. Keep the fire away from the other guy. Okay, oh, yeah. Is it rich? Get away. I'll just stop driving a roll. But blow on it a little, too. We gotta stoke this mf Oh, this really hurts! Oh, boy, you're making a mess. Uh, you know what? Sample siren. Can I distract you a bit with, look at this collection of your CDs from the band that you were in. Yeah, uh, well, I'm a huge Nickelback fan. Yeah, all of us are. Everybody is. Everybody. In the world. Do <laughs> you want... You want me to s- sing some for you? Yes. Um, pl- yes. 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 That'll yes. make them yes. bellow us out with all the smoke and we'll come flying out. All right. Perfectly rational. Well, here you go. Oh, a little on. sample of... Oh. But, but no album cuts. Like, hits. 
Oh, just just hits. Yeah, okay. Yeah, just no, all the Mickleback hits. Oh, okay. <laughs> hear ye, hear ye. He's got to do the town card. I'm about to sing you some Thaddeus Mickleback specials. Look at that pictograph. This is the one Every I like. Every time yeah, I see good. it makes me blue. Oh, 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 it's working, it's working. Me. Rich, hold it's on working. to me. Working. Hold on to me, Rich. Uh, what is on oh, to? Oh, 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 I'm a diamond pig. Oh, 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 it's me, Rich. Oh, Rich, look. Oh, my God, what just happened to me? That is really is burning like Wicker Man. Oh, Can we just someone put me out, please? Look at all those stop, stop drop, and roll, roll, Rich. Oh, right, right. Wait, you guys. No, don't stop, drop, and roll on a corn maze. No. Oh, no, no, no. My maze is on. The thread is burning like a fuse. We should follow it. Let's go. Uh, it's a great idea. Let's go. Let's follow it. I'm Let's the flames. <sighs> Come back to me. Hear ye, hear ye. I want your soul. There's the exit up ahead. Go. Uh, I'm not going to leave you behind, Mabel. You I should. Wouldn't. I know I Mabel, should. Mabel, no. You got to come with us. Okay. But the chain of kindness has to start somewhere. Get on my back. Clever girl. That's right. Well, Greenpeace... Since the maze is done, I guess you're not going to have to work here anymore, so... <sighs> you can stay on my Jennifer convertible. Thank you, Kevin. That's a nice You're couch. a very forgiving person. Let's start again. Samples? Does anybody want to sample my loneliness? He's still alive. Just let it burn. <laughs> let it burn. There he Just goes. let him burn. Wow. Watch him burn. Watch and burn. Harry. Oh, one last... Fuck here Rich. I am <laughs> And it all happened in a place called Spontaneation. Tony <laughs> Nosa! Hi! Where can people find you? What do you want to plug? It's a new year, 2018. 2018. God bless us all. Uh, Trondy <laughs> Newman on Twitter and Instagram. Uh, you can still watch my BET show, The Comedy Get Down, on BET, uh, probably in some internet fashion. But Jillian still needs a home, I assume. Still needs a home. Probably. Yeah. <laughs> As of this recording. Unless it, a Christmas miracle <laughs> happened. <laughs> Uh, yeah, my album, Four Lost Souls, you can get it on iTunes or from Bloodshot Records. Good plugs. Matt Gorley! Uh, Matt Gorley on Instagram and Twitter. The podcasts are, I was there too, James Bonding, Pistol Shrimps Radio, and some super ego stuff, I'm sure, coming your way. Right? Oh, and something big should be out by now, maybe. Oh, really? Yeah. It probably will be, right? Yeah, you, you, if Let's you're listening. Let's see how we did. All right. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, wait, we may be talking about two different things. Maybe we are. two possible big things. Two possible big things? In the podcasting. In the podcasting world. Not, we're not having yeah. a baby together. No. Um, well, we did in, in Brooklyn, we did a Super Ego Forgotten Classics. That's right. As of this recording, we yes. don't know how that went. Yeah. I, I bet that it went really well. I think it did. I bet we did a great job. Yeah. So is All that the- one of the big things? This is great. I checked. It's good. (laughs) Is that one of the big things? Yeah. What's the other big thing? Can we talk about it? I don't even know what it is. You talking about your used car podcast? (laughs) I thought about it when I came up. You listen to movies, describe what you think it looks like. (laughs) Oh, that's that's brilliant. (laughs) Uh, Anyway, yeah. All right. I don't know if I should. (laughs) Maybe you'll tell me off the air. I will. All right. Chris Grace, where can people find you? What do you want to plug? I'm at Chris Grace on Twitter uh, and YouTube, and uh, I'm at uh, UCB Sunset Thursdays and Fridays doing musical improv. Also, around this time, uh, I'm making an appearance on Superstore. There we go. Oh. Peripheral but important character. <laughs> a character that should come back more and more, I, in I, my opinion. I agree. <laughs> I haven't even seen it, but I agree. <laughs> Uh, Evan Schletter, he's Evan Schletter on all the things. Go to EvanSchletter.com and check out his non spontaneous nation work because it is great. And why is it great? Because Evan Schletter is only the best. If you want to look up Evan Schletter's name, you got to know how to spell it. And to spell it, you got to do this. E B A N S C H L A T T E R. As for me, well, San Francisco Sketch Fest. It's this month. A bunch of shows happening. We're going to be doing a live Spontaneous Nation. We're going to be doing um, a Work Juice Players improv show. Uh, we are going to. Why well, I'm trying to look at the date this comes out. I should have written it down, but I didn't. 
This is how we learn, folks. This is how we learn January 8th. Yeah, so that is coming up. Uh, that's this weekend, I believe. Um, I will be there in San Francisco. Go to paulftompkins.com slash live to see all the shows that I will be performing up there. It ain't nothing but a good time. Thank you to Earwolf for hosting the podcast. Thank you to Engineer Ryan for engineering us all the way to the end of the show, which this is. Goodbye forever. Until next week, this is Paul F. Tompkins saying, Semper in Presenti! Breaking into comedy, it's messy, it's hard, it's intense. It's the subject of the HBO comedy series Crashing, starring comic Pete Holmes and executive produced by Judd Apatow. Crashing shows a realistic and honest depiction of starting out a comedy career in New York City. Season 2 of Crashing premieres January 14th at 10.30 p.m. All of Season 1 is available to stream on HBO. Get into it. Hi, I'm feminist Aaron Gibson. I am homosexual Brian Safi, and we host the Throwing Shade podcast. On Earwolf. We talk about... Women's issues, LGBT issues, pop culture, 90 90 Day Day Fiance. Fiance. We go through all of it. We've had guests like Kay Cannon, Trixie Mattel, Ira Madison, Matt Bellisai, Paul F. Tompkins. And us. Yes. We we are are our own guests. So far, the most interesting people on the show have been Aaron and me. You can check us out on Earwolf on your favorite podcasting app. Yeah. Or check me out on Hollywood Boulevard. (laughs) I'll be the one polishing the Steven Seagal star. And I'll be. Sorry, Katie Siegel. And I'll be supplying the shoe shine. Executive producers Scott Ackerman, Chris Bannon, Colin Anderson, and Paul F. Tompkins. For more media and content, go to earwolf.com.